Hello everybody and welcome to the third part of the chapter gravitation. In case you haven't already seen part 1 and 2, please go back and watch them. Now let's do a quick recap of what all we did in the previous parts. We saw what was gravitational force. We saw what was centripetal force. We saw the universal law of gravitation. Then we saw about uses of the universal law of gravitation. So if we have to recap the universal law of gravitation, it said that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force which is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So in this particular part of the chapter, let's first talk about free fall. Now, let's take a simple example of a stone. We have a stone here and we're going to throw the stone up. Now, this particular stone is going to reach a certain height and then it is going to fall back to earth. Okay, you can see in this case, the stone has reached a certain height and it is coming back to earth. Now, we have learned previously that earth attracts objects towards itself and this attraction is due to gravitational force. So the stone also reaches a certain height and comes back to earth because of gravitational force. So let's see how we can define free fall. So whenever an object falls towards the earth under gravitational force alone, we say that the object is under free fall. So if an object is going to fall back to earth only because of gravitational force, we will call that as free fall because we are not giving any other source like we are not pulling the stone back or we are not pushing the stone from up. The stone is naturally coming back down because of gravitational force. So that is why we call it as free fall. Now I'll ask you a very simple question. Is there any change in velocity of the falling object? Just think about it. Do you think there is a change in velocity of the falling object? The answer is quite simple. Let's see what we already know. We know very well that there is no change in direction of motion. We know that the stone that goes up does not fly away in a tangent. It comes back to earth. So there is no change in direction. But due to the earth's attraction, there will be a change in the magnitude of velocity because the earth is attracting the stone back to itself there will be a change in magnitude of velocity any change in velocity will involve change in acceleration now this particular change in acceleration or this acceleration due to the gravitational force is what we will call as acceleration due to gravity so because of gravitation, there is acceleration happening. So we name it as acceleration due to gravity. And it is denoted by the alphabet small g. And its SI unit is meter per square second, which is meter per square second because we don't want the fraction. We're bringing second up. So that is why we're writing it as minus two. So the SI unit is meter per second square. Now, let us see how we can find g, okay? We've spoken about what g is, which is nothing but acceleration due to gravity. Now, let us see how we can find g. Now, according to the second law of motion, we know that force is the product of mass and acceleration. Now, if we consider the same stone that we saw previously, and we will say that its mass is m, the stone that we threw up had a mass m. And we know that according to the second law of motion, product of mass and acceleration is force. We know very well that there is an acceleration involved in falling down. If we apply the same thing to the second law of motion, we will come up with an equation that force is equal to mg. G is the acceleration due to gravity and m is the mass of the stone that we just threw up. And if you remember in the second part, we had a formula that said force is equal to gravitational constant into mass of the two objects divided by the square of the distance between them, right? We had an equation like this, which we wrote as equation one, we will consider, and this as equation two. Now, if we try and substitute mg in place of f, because f is equal to mg, so we'll take out this f from here and replace it with mg. So we will get an equation 
that looks like this mg is equal to g okay so this is the equation we will come up with now here it's not even g yet because there is the mass attached there so let's just take this mass to the right hand side and see what happens so because it is multiplied on the left hand side when we take it to the right hand side it gets divided okay now these two will get cancelled so ultimately you will end up with an equation like this okay so you have that acceleration due to gravity is equal to the gravitational constant into mass of the earth divided by the square of the distance between the object and the earth okay so if we have to write what each of them stands for okay so if we see what each of these alphabets stand for we have g which is the acceleration due to gravity we have capital g which is the gravitational constant we have capital m which is nothing but the mass of the earth and d stands for the distance between the earth and the object so this is equation a which is extremely important now let us see how we can modify this equation a little bit let us first write down equation a again so we've written down equation a again here now if we consider the surface of the earth let us think that there is an object that is on the surface of the earth and the distance in equation a is equal to r okay suppose now the distance between the earth and the object we'll consider the core of the earth and the object is r r is nothing but the radius of the earth now why is it radius because if you look at the earth it's it's almost like a sphere right it's almost a circle so the distance between the object and the core of the earth is the radius of the earth now maybe earth is not a perfect sphere because we know that the poles are flattened the poles are generally flattened the radius of the earth is lesser at the poles and increases as we go to the equator okay because it is flatter the radius is lesser at the poles and it keeps increasing as you go to the equator so that's why maybe it is not a perfect sphere but still we will consider this as radius and let us see how we can substitute it so g is equal to constant of gravity into mass of the earth divided by the radius square okay so this is equation b now this is an equation that we get when we substitute the radius in place of the distance because the object is very close to the earth now in most calculations we will consider the value g to be a constant because we are all on the same planet the gravitation is almost same at most points of the earth apart from the poles that is also a very minute difference that you can feel so we will consider it to be a constant whereas if we consider an object that is far away from earth suppose there is an asteroid somewhere a few light years away from earth suppose this is an asteroid we can't consider this distance between the asteroid and the earth to be r okay so in these cases where we are trying to find out g for an object which is very far away from earth we have to go back to equation a so this equation b is used only for objects which are very near to earth or on the surface of earth so this is something that you have to remember equation a is used for objects far away from earth and equation b is used for objects near or on the earth surface okay now we have spoken all this let us see how we can find out the value of g let's calculate the value of g so we can calculate the value of g because we already know these particular values we already know what is gravitational constant we know the mass of the earth and we know the radius of the earth also let us first write down these gravitational constant is 6.7 into 10 to the power of minus 11 newton meter square per kg square and mass of the earth is 6 into 10 to the power of 24 kg and radius of the earth is 6.4 into 10 to the power of 6 meters 
Now, if we substitute all this in this particular equation, which is equation B, this is equation B. If we are going to substitute all of these values in equation B, let us see, we will get an equation that looks like this. Okay, so we will come up with an equation that looks like this. Let's bring out our calculator. Let's see 6.7 into 6 is 40.2. Let's see what square of 6.4 is. Forty point nine six. The previous one was 40.2. So the previous answer was 40.2 and this is 40.96. Let's just write that down. 40.2 40.96. Now this minus 11 gets subtracted in 24. So you will get 24 minus 11 is 13. So 40.2 into 10 to the power of 13. Here you know very well that because it is 6 into 2 which is 12, 10 to the power of 12. Now, if we divide these two, let's bring out our calculator one more time. Let's divide 40.2 divided by 40.96. You get 0 0.98. Let's write that value, 0 0.98. Now, once this goes up, 13 minus 12, you will get 10 again. So, we will multiply this by 10 which is nothing but 9.8 and the SI unit of G we know is meter per second square so we'll write that as it is. So the value of G is pretty much a constant like we saw previously so the value of G is 9.8 meter per second square. Okay so this is another constant that we have apart from G. So with this, we complete this part of the chapter. Let's see what all we've covered so far. We saw what was free fall. We saw acceleration due to gravity and we saw that it is denoted by G. For objects that were far away from Earth, we took this particular equation to calculate acceleration of gravity, where the distance that separates them is D. And then we saw the acceleration due to gravity for objects that are on or near the surface of the earth where we took the distance as the radius of the earth so this was the next one and finally we calculated the value of g which was found to be 9.8 meter per second square so with this we completed the third part of the chapter in case you have any doubts please write back to us